Now, Michael Coleman and a deadly boys' night out. I became an officer in the Cleveland Police Department on November 7th, 1977. By the end of 1988, I had been working as a detective for about seven years, basically working burglaries and robberies. We are in an area that was saturated with crimes, and wherever the crime was, that's where we went. The night of December 30th, 1988, I was off duty, heading over to a local bar called the Legend Lounge to meet a friend of mine, Don Drazel. The bar had cable television, and Don wanted me to meet him there to watch one of the college bowl games. It was on the West Coast, and it didn't start till around midnight our time. As I went to pull into the parking lot, I noticed a gray pickup truck sitting there with the engine running. It looked like he was about to pull out. So I flashed the lights to let him know I was looking for a parking spot. The driver totally ignored me, so I pulled through the lot, went around the bar, and came back again. The guy didn't move. He just gave me the finger. I decided to write down the license number, but I didn't have any paper, so I wrote the number on my hand. I finally parked in the rear of the lounge and went in. As I did, I remembered that a pickup truck had been reported in connection with some recent burglaries. I was going to have to talk with the driver, but by the time I got to the door, the truck had gone. I decided to run the plate through DMV in the morning. Ray Copley on the Legend Lounge. I knew him basically through my friend Don. He seemed like a nice enough guy to me. Never caused any problems that I saw. Of course, with the ship I worked, I wasn't in there too often. Hi, Harry. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've seen Don. I'm supposed to meet him here to watch the game. Oh, I haven't come in yet. Yeah. But... Come on down. You know, Vicky, it's your mother's birthday. Hi, Mike. Come to join the party? Oh, for a couple of minutes. Hi, Mom. Happy birthday. Yeah. It was warm in the bar, so I took off my jacket, keeping it close to me because that's where I kept my gun when I was off duty. What are you doing down here tonight? We hardly ever see you. I'm supposed to meet Don here. We're going to watch the Holiday Bowl. Barry Sanders, right? Oklahoma State? Yeah, Don wants to see if he's really Heisman worthy. Oh, we better hurry up. Then game's already started. Where the hell is he? Don was at home asleep. As luck would have it, his car wouldn't start. He called the bar several times, but the phone was always busy, so he gave up and went to bed. I talked with Vicky and her friends, but nobody told me what happened there just two hours before. A guy named Bruce Miner was in the bar, drunk and acting belligerent. Is that all you guys can play? Come on, pick it up, pick it up! Play like you got a pair! Hey, buddy, buddy, come on, I'm on party here. That's enough of this country crap. I want a little rock and roll! Hey. Keep it down, or I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And I'm gonna have to ask you to kiss my behind. Monroe, you wanna give me a hand here? This gentleman's having difficulty finding the door. Okay, friend, take off. Get your hands off me, I'll kick your butt. Come on, get out of here before you get hurt. Hey, you won't fight? I'll kick all your butts! I'm a teamster. So? After the altercation, Bruce rocked across the street to where a police officer was writing a ticket. Hey. hey what the hell happened to you? In, in the bar. They beat me up. You want to come back inside, point him out to me? No. I'll take care of him on my own. Hey, 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 hang on. Calm down. I'm going to take you to the hospital. No hospital. I'll handle this my own way. Bruce went home. When his wife saw the condition he was in, she called the police and EMS. But when they got there, he told them the same thing. He'd handle it his own way. In fact, Bruce was planning on returning, but first he got hold of his brothers, Mark and Calvin, to help him out. <laughs> Stop that. What are you carrying? 
ever leave home without it. <laughs> Let's go! But like I said, no one told me about what had happened. To me, it was just another normal night. After a while, Don's not showing. I'm getting out of here. Everybody hit the floor! my head and pull out my eardrum. The next two rounds hit me in the top of the left shoulder, next to my lower back. Felt like somebody hit me in the top of the shoulder with a sledgehammer. thing was over in no more than 30 seconds. By this time, anyone who was left in the bar was screaming and going crazy. I was trying to come up off the floor, but was slipping on my own blood. At the same time, I knew I couldn't stay down. Oh, my God, something raised the shot. He's not the only one. Give me the gun. Ray always kept a gun under the bar, so Vicky grabbed it and gave it to me. some bitch in the truck. Anybody get the number? Yeah, I got it. Police and paramedics arrived within two minutes. They tended to Ray first while I filled the officers in and gave them the license number of the truck. I don't know who it was who gave me the finger earlier, but they would have gotten away with the shooting if I hadn't bothered writing down the license number. In less than an hour, they picked up Bruce Minor. The next day, the SWAT team arrested Calvin Minor at his home, retrieving the guns used in the shootings third brother, Mark, turned himself in when he found out his brothers had been arrested. Ray lived, although he lost his left eye and still has 60 pellets in his face. I had to retire because of my injuries. My life now is nothing but doctor's visits. They surgically inserted another eardrum, but I still have a continuous ringing in my head, plus some hearing loss. I reacted as I did, based on the training I received in dealing with life-threatening emergencies. I'm just grateful that because of my reactions, no one else was seriously injured or killed, and that Ray Copley and myself are still alive. We'll be right back with tonight's Top Cops and the aftermaths of their stories. Andreas Serrata pled guilty to selling cocaine and was sentenced to four years in prison. Informant Antonio Castro had his sentence reduced to five years probation for cooperating with police. His name was changed to protect his identity. Since this incident, Lieutenant Robert Astorino was promoted to Detective Lieutenant commanding the Mount Vernon Detective Division. Daniel Salatolo was promoted to Sergeant. Robert Kaluri and James Garcia are now partnered. They all continue to serve the citizens of Mount Vernon. Mark Miner and his brothers, Calvin and Bruce, were all brought to trial and testified against each other on the stand. In his defense, Mark said, yeah, I shot the policeman. I didn't know he was a policeman. They were all convicted of felonious assault. The injuries he received in the shooting forced Michael Coleman to retire from police work. He received the Medal of Valor for his actions. Top Cops returns next week with stories from Albuquerque, New Mexico, as Officer John Mesimer and his partner answer a deadly domestic call. And Great Falls, Montana, as Highway Patrol Officer Mary Pat Murphy sees a routine traffic stop become her most dangerous assignment. Join us, because after Top Cops, everything else is just fiction. Catch up on all the weekend news with the WBAL-TV Sunday News Night. All the news you need to start your week right. Every Sunday night, here on WBAL-TV Channel 11. Saturday, the Oscar-winning actress of Driving Miss Daisy joins the star of Cocoon in the Emmy-winning Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation, Foxfire. And Sunday, the biggest names in show business celebrate Frank Sinatra's 75th birthday. <laughs>